and this one has a little bit of a party trick. Hi guys and welcome back to the show. I'm basing most of the joinery for my turntable stand around using my 6mm CMT grooving blade and for that I need a new crosscut sled for my Laguna Fusion 3 cabinet saw. This one has a little bit of a party trick so let's not waste any more time and let's get right down to this. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. For the fences, I'm using these 2x4-ish boards that I reclaimed from a bed frame. The front face is the reference fence. And it needs a chamfer on the bottom to prevent sawdust from pushing your workpiece out of square. And Baby Vader said he was happy with more or less 45 degrees. Since I don't have a crosscut sled yet, I cleaned up one end of the fences using my miter sled. This is one centimeter or three eighths of an inch plywood that I tore off a shipping crate, so the edges needed a cleanup. And now you get to see my face when I've screwed up forgetting the crosscut capacity of my MFT and spent unnecessary energy trying to figure out a way of not having to fix it. Damn it. I can always forget this. If I go on... The back fence doesn't have to be square, its function is to hold the sled together, not to be used as a reference surface. So it could be fixed now using my three musketeers here. The front fence on the other hand will be squared up later, hence I'm only screwing it near the ends.
Now, the party trick I have been alluding to is a replaceable sacrificial strip. This will make it easier to maintain the zero clearance to the different blade thicknesses. The sacrificial strip will be screwed to the sled, and the reason I am cutting it so wide is to prevent the blade from hitting the screws when doing miter cuts. To get a good fit for the white oak runners, I used the old bump and pray method that Guy Dunlap famously loves so much. Or maybe not. I'll leave a link to the Woodshop Life podcast down below. I have my Laguna Fusion 3 on a slow 16 amp breaker, but the shop vacs on a normal 16 amp along with the rest of the equipment in the shop. Baby Raider said that would work out fine. As you can see here, the saw is still running. After this incident, I put the shop vacs on the same breaker as the saw. The washers here will shim the runners up slightly. This way we can glue the runners temporarily to the sled before fixing them with all the screws. Here I am using hot glue, but I think CA glue and activator is a better solution as the hot glue builds a bit of height.
After a preliminary check with a precision square, I prepared for the 5 cut test. I have a whole video on this subject in metric no less, and it is quite manageable. Just take, take it step by step and you are done in no time. The only things I would like to add here is that when you turn the workpiece, you always put the freshly cut side towards the fence or your reference surface. And if you can't figure out which way to move the fence, just make a drawing and imagine that the difference in measurements on the front and back are much larger. After a few adjustments, this was one edge of the cutoff. This was the other. Multiply by negative 1 to get a positive number. Divide by the four previous cuts. And the length of the cutoff. Now with some calculate the magic, we can tell that for the cut to be 1 mm out, the cut needs to be 3.68 meters, or around 145 inches. That's good enough for Baby Vader to continue building the wooden Death Star. And for the second dumb phase of the video. This is how I react when realizing that I forgot to start recording on the main camera. I have made my own furniture wax, but I still have some off-the-shelf Liberon, and I will use that for now. smooth as a baby's butt after the wax. I will use a block to cover the blade on the front fence. This will also serve as a physical reminder of where not to put my fingers. <laughs> For some incomprehensible reason, I felt the need to check this block for square. Twice.
I didn't think the rebates on the fences would be a problem, but they made it more difficult to clamp to the fences, so I filled them with some strips of white oak. Hey, who says you can't use proper wood on shop jigs? At least this is not hashtag unnecessary walnut. And if you don't catch that reference, I'll leave a link to the We Built a Thing podcast down below. A couple of swipes with my Stanley Handyman H1247 block plane to round over the edges and we'll call the job a good one. And here are some shots of me using the crosscut sled to make tenons. But again, that is it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Should you want to support me, you'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. If you don't feel like that, you can help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.